Alleluia! Christ is risen! Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is a reading from John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and we do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hard hired hand, who is not the shepherd, does not own the sheep. He sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock 
one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I like quirky movies, and I'm particularly fond of the Coen Brothers movies, like Raising Arizona and Brother Where Art Thou? And in the late 1990s, the Coen Brothers directed a movie called The Big Lebowski, and it became an enduring cult hit. And in it, Jeff Bridges plays the lead role, and his name is Just the Dude. And although it's considered a comedy, it's not a silly slapstick thing. It deals with complex themes that highlight spiritual insights about the human condition. Things like death and betrayal, greed, the seeming absence of God, and negative consequences of one's choices. And in the face of that, when asked how he was doing, the dude's famous answer was always the same. The dude abides. The dude abides. And in today's reading from 1 John, we hear the word abide four separate times. And the word that's translated as abide is the Greek word meno. And this word is special to the writers of 1 John, who are thought to be the same as the gospel writer. You see, of all the 120 occurrences of meno in the New Testament, 60 of them are contained in the writings of the authors that we identify as John. And as a, as a side note, the authorship of John's Gospel and letters along with Revelations is a whole topic in itself. And if you're interested in it, we can talk about it later. But the point is that all of these sources extensively use the word meno or abide. And we've all read these verses many times, but have you ever really stopped and thought about this abide thing. Now, according to Strong's Greek dictionary, abide is used in these instances in John as a primary verb that means to stay in a given place, state or relation, or to continue, endure, be present, and to remain. And in the big Lebowski, the exact meaning and source of Lebowski's response, the dude abides, is never really explained. But the statement did inspire a book titled The Dude Abides, The Gospel According to the Cohen Brothers by Kathleen Falsani. And one of the thoughts is that the dude might be referencing the Hebrew book of Ecclesiastes, where it reads, one generation passes away and another generation comes, but the earth abides forever. And much like the earth abiding or remaining forever, the dude can weather changes and chaos that follow him throughout the movie. But he manages to still remain the same, to endure, and of course, abide. And I submit that this is an incomplete statement because we really don't know what this means in context. And after you watch the movie, other than his rather banal lifestyle that's made up of uh, being tolerable by a marijuana-induced haze, you can only guess at what, how, and why Lebowski chooses to abide in that state. See, we really don't know much about Lebowski at all. We just know what we see. And from that perspective, there are two ways to look at life. First, what you do determines who you are. Or second, who you are determines what you do. And I think here, the writer of 1 John explains that God is all about the second option. Who you are determines what you do. So the question becomes, who do you think you are and where do you think that you abide? And as Christians, who are created in the Imago Dei, the very image of God, what we should be doing is imitating Jesus. And if you're willing to be like Jesus, then you should 
endure, be present, and to remain where Jesus abides. And where does Jesus abide? The first instance of abide in the Gospel of John is in chapter 1 when Jesus is baptized and the Holy Spirit descends and remains on him. And throughout the Gospel of John, Jesus makes it clear that he himself abides in the Father and the Father abides in him. And everything Jesus does and says is from the Father. See, Jesus during his earthly ministry doesn't do things on his own accord. His ministry is not autonomous as there's a clear unity and fellowship among the persons of the Trinity. And we're invited by Jesus himself to join the union of the Trinity. And Jesus presents the clearest illustration and call for us to abide in him in John's Gospel when he presents himself as the true vine with us as the branches. And just as God is faithful and abides in us through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we're to abide in Christ because we're warned that without the vine, Jesus, the branch, us, cannot bear its fruit, it withers and it dies. Well, okay, but how do we know that we're abiding in Christ? And the answer is simple, it's in the reading. All who obey Jesus' commandments abide in him and he abides in them. Well, <clears throat> The proof of abiding in Jesus means continually saying yes to Jesus and his commandments. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. And then the writer goes further and explains in the gospel lesson the ultimate test of love. And this is John's big point. Jesus is God's son, and you can tell that he loves you because he laid down his life for you. So now, we're to go out and show that same kind of love to each other, even those that we don't agree with. It's that simple. And we're to love not in word and speech, but in truth and action. See, if we're to abide in Christ's word, it's not enough just to become aware of the needs of the community that surrounds us, but to truly abide. Each of us has to go a step further and do something about it through our own individual actions in the world. And laying down our lives isn't so much about dying for someone else, as much as it is about giving up a part of yourself in humble service for the benefit of others. And it can be a large organized event, or laying down our lives could be as simple as just taking time to reach out and sit and listen to someone who is alone or is hurting. And there's no shortage of opportunities to become involved. Now, for the past year, we've been dealing with the dangers of COVID. And because of the fear of infection, and we've become inwardly focused and insulated from contact with others, and that's made it very difficult to actively serve. And that lack of contact is something to be aware of as these restrictions are relaxed and we assume some kind of a new normal. And when we do, then ask yourself, do my actions show the world where I abide? And according to our rating today, the answer should be yes, but let's face it. Sometimes we just don't do a very good job of imitating Jesus. Even neglecting our relationship with God, leave alone others for the demands of this world, be it work or school, or sports, or our social life. It can be any number of things. Or sometimes, because of our own needs, <clears throat> it's hard to focus on the needs of others. But I want you to stop and consider that God is more concerned about what's happening inside of us rather than what's happening to us. And abiding in Christ, remaining in Christ, does not mean that you just attend church services or pray for a few minutes a day. And it's more than writing a check to your favorite cause. Because our actions should not be limited to the mere financial support of individuals and organizations that are doing the heavy lifting and hard work. Although I want to stop here and encourage you all to keep writing a check, especially to St. Aidan's, so that we can pay the bills. But remember, 
Being a Christian is a way of life. And the writer of 1 John makes it perfectly clear the proof of abiding in Christ is extending ourselves, maybe even uncomfortably, into the world through humble service to others. You see, on the most basic level, the ministerial work we choose to take on is to be one of the primary sources of our own personal spiritual growth as disciples. And guided by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and your actions of humble service to others, we're to grow into a deeper understanding and cultivate a closer relationship with our Creator. And it is our abiding in Jesus' love which transforms our personal desires to align to God's perfect will. And this, of course, leads to an internal change of heart and mind, which motivates us into further action. Think about that process. And if the work you do has a positive impact on the ones you minister to, and at the same time feeds your own spirit and inspires you to want to do more, then you'll know you're following God's will. And as we come back from lockdown, think about how your abiding in Christ can be extended into the community. And it doesn't have to be scary. Start by supporting your community right here at St. Aidan's with your increased involvement. There's plenty of opportunities to support this community, starting with volunteering to help set up in-person worship services. Or you can become a lay reader or a lay Eucharistic visitor, or participate or even host discussion groups and study groups. And then consider, if you're able, leaving the familiar and uncomf comfortable surroundings of St. David's to engage the community outside of the church. Think about what this country would look like if all Christians in the United States, more than 180 million of them, were people abiding in Christ and loving their neighbors, and not just sometimes or an hour on Sunday, but abiding, remaining in Christ most of the time, while loving your neighbors all of the time. I can only imagine the effect that would have on our nation. And I know that it would be just a tremendous positive impact on all the social ills we face, be it crime or violence or intolerance, and it would help to close the widening political divide. And I leave you today with a statement from Mother Teresa. Love cannot remain by itself. It has no meaning. Love has to be put into action. And that action is service. So dudes and dudettes abide.
Prayers of the People Let us who have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection pray for the church, the world, and all in need, saying, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For a new birth of peace on earth among all human families and nations, that hatred and violence and war may cease, we pray, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole body of Christ and all who hear his holy name, that we may serve Christ with glad and generous hearts, we pray, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For this nation and all nations of the world, that those who lead may know truth and practice integrity, and all peoples may grow together in concord, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. We are strengthened by Christ's resurrection to share the power of the Spirit with all the suffering. May the power of Christ's resurrection give life to all, especially to those who suffer in body and in spirit, including George, Margaret, Nicholas, Jill, Mengert family, Singh family, Tori, Karen, Chris, Don, Ed, Lewis, Rick, Mavis, Alice, Peggy, Chris, Virginia, Clifford, Pamela, Iona, Carol, Glenn, Tana, the victims of violence, victims of the coronavirus. We pray, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in faith and for all the dying, that they may know the love of God who has raised Christ up, having loosed the pangs of death. For all who have died, especially Al, Kim, victims of violence, victims of the coronavirus. We pray, risen Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus Christ, we greet you. Your hands still have holes in them. Your feet are wet from the dew. And with the memory of our names, undimmed by three days of death, you meet us, risen from the grave. We fail to understand how. We puzzle at the reason why. But you have come, not to answer our questions, but to show us your face. You are alive and the world can rejoice again. Hallelujah. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share God's peace. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who has sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject of evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only eternal Son, to share our human nature, 
to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and ending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive his holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. Please join me in a prayer of spiritual communion. Jesus, my Savior and friend, I believe that you are truly present in the sacrament of Holy Communion and truly present to us here and now. Since I cannot now receive you in the bread and wine, I remember and trust your words, this is my body and blood given for you. I love you and ask you to come spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Keep all of us strong in faith, hope, and love until we can meet at your table again. Amen. The Post-Communion Litany, today and tomorrow. Lo, I am with you always. 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 I am with you always, today and tomorrow. Today and tomorrow, you are with us always to the end of the world. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do God's will, working in you that which is pleasing in God's sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and your loved ones this day and remain with you always.
Amen. Good morning again and welcome. Let's see. Oh, this morning, at this time, if you're watching at 10 o'clock, we will be holding the first of our services live and in the chapel, in the sanctuary. It's a wonderful uh, experience after a year being not able to get in here and uh, we're very excited to do it and I, I welcome you to come next week or in the coming weeks. Just call Nathaniel because there is a limit to the number of people we can receive. And we hope to continue this for as long as we can and uh, maybe some of the uh, restrictions will be lifted as we go along. Now, th there's a new chapter of Surge being formed in Malibu by two of our parishioners, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Stephanie Cup and Jennifer Baker have started uh, a new project with Surge in Malibu and uh, everybody's welcome to join. They're gonna have a, an opening meeting on May the 6th and the information of course will be in the tidings just before that and uh, I'm very excited to see them doing this. Surge stands for Standing Up for Racial Justice and it couldn't be coming at a better time. So if you have an interest in this, please either contact them or make sure that uh, you're available when they give this meeting. Now, I think that's it for this morning. So if there's no other announcements, oh yeah, <laughs> just reminded, uh, we still have Sendering Prayer every Friday at noon. That's in the tidings, you just check in there. And uh, if you want just 30 minutes, we don't take a long time, but if you want just 30 minutes of quiet, reflection in your day, at least for one day a week, come join us, 12 noon on Fridays. And uh, I think that this time, <laughs> that is everything. So stay safe, stay well, wear a mask, follow Jesus. Cheerio. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in peace, Rejoicing in the risen Christ. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.